So once again, I'm going to continue where I left off yesterday with regard to lesson seven. So we're working with color. Um, as you can see, already it gets, it can, it can get fairly complex if, if you so choose. Um, the tools available in Illustrator to, to create and manipulate color are really extremely sophisticated. I don't know that that exists in any other program that I'm aware of. Um, anyway, when you have the swatch panel open, you'll notice that we have a grayscale color group. We have the bright colors color group, and I created these the other day, and we'll do that again. So if you want to create any colors from the default color in our um, swatches, and some of the ones that we just created into a color group, it's really quite simple. Um, you just click <clears throat> on the first one, hold down the shift key, and click on the last one. And then, um, down here in the little folder, that's to create a new color group. So I just simply click on that, and I'm going to name it Guitar Colors. And boom, there we go. Now, should you decide to remove a color from a color group? Um, let me go ahead and take this one. Um, all you have to do is select it. And I think this is the tint. I hope this is the tint one. Yeah, uh, that's the tint. Click and drag it and put it back inside the, uh, the other group of colors. And that's it. And if I wanted to add it back in, you just simply click and drag it and put it back in. And it's back in and you've added a color to the color group. That's um, pretty straightforward. Okay. So the next thing that they wanted us to do, and this is sort of a repeat of yesterday, but I want to build up to where um, I had an issue, is that if I select the background color for the, the cassette tape, everybody knows what those are, sort of. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. Even CDs are rare. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to close the swatch and instead I want to select this one right here, the color guide. So with this color is my key color. And then I come up here and I select from that, I want to select analogous colors. We have our analogous colors group. And again, if I want to add those now is a color group, I just simply click on this button right here and it adds it my swatch panel. Where I was having difficulty, and I'm going to, I did it again yesterday, but I got to make sure that I count and I select the same color that they did. And that's where I think I goofed, is that I want to create a complementary color group now. So I'm going to deselect these colors over here from the cassette, make sure that I do that. And the color that they selected I'm checking to make sure here. There were three over. It is this one right here. Okay, so it's the second row down and it's the fourth color over. But before I select um, a complementary group, I want to make sure that this color that is selected is my key color. So those would be analogous colors based on that color. So as you can see, you can just go down this path and you can create a whole variety of color sets that are um, pretty amazing. But now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select, instead of analogous colors, I'm going to select complementary two. And these are the colors that we have in the book. So I was not, yesterday I wasn't selecting the correct color in the other color group. And I don't know that I also made it a key color. That's the trick. The little one right here is our key color, and that's what's, ba what's used to base all the other colors. So I'll go ahead and I'll add this to our, um, make another color group. And now I can close the, um, this panel. And I can open up our swatch panel. Notice that that's been added now. OK. 
Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to edit this color group and make some revisions to it. And then we're going to um, come back over here to our cassette and we're going to update those colors. Okay. So what I can do, um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure. So I got that right. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this color group is selected. Um, I don't know if they rename it. It's not really critical if we do. But what I want to do is I'm going to edit this color group now. And to do that, you select on this little color wheel down at the bottom here of our um, swatch panel. And so when I click on that, this should pop up. If it doesn't, it's possible, you know, that we have another one of these selected. There's three options here. We're using this one at the moment, and then shortly we will be using this one. Right now, each of these little dots within the color wheel represent <coughs> the colors in um, our swatch panel here. Um, they are all linked to one another. So if I select the key color here and I move it, notice that the entire group moves with it and it changes. I'm going to move that back like so. And I'm going to make it a little bit brighter by pulling it out just a little bit. Just a little bit more and the color is a little bit more intense. And then I'm going to make them a little bit more, a little bit brighter by adjusting the brightness down here like so. Okay. Now, because all of the colors are linked, at this particular moment, I, there's only one color that I want to change. And I'm going to take and I want to change this color up here. So to do that, I need to make sure that this is unlinked. And now I can take and I can select this color. And what I want to do is I'm going to change the, um, the property of it. I'm going to change it so that it has been unlinked. And I'm going to change, uh, I think, we want the cyan to be 48. I hope I'm picking the right one, 48%. And we want the magenta to be um, 74%. And we want the yellow to be 21%. So you can see it's way over here, okay. That looks correct. Okie doke. So it looks like I've got it all ready to go. Cool. Okay. So now that I've made those, those changes, I can go back and I can relink this if I want. But now what I'd like to do, um, I could either create a brand new color group from this, or I can select this button right here. Now, if I, if you follow the textbook, they've closed this little window. We need to click on this little button to open it back up and to update or save the changes to that color group. I click right here. So that's what I want to do. Notice that it's been updated here. Okay. So now I can click OK. So now what we're going to do, now that our colors have been updated, is that we're going to edit the artwork in our, in our cassette group. So to do that, we're going to select the entire object here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and we're going to edit. And I can do that from, can't do that from here anymore. But what I can do is I can select from up here. I can recolor the artwork. Or from our properties panel, I can select over here, recolor artwork. And this pops up. Okay. Now, if I select edit instead, um, they're going to do it a little bit differently. I could um, assign colors this way, and we will get to this in a moment. But I'm going to switch to the edit mode. And now I'm going to select to this one so that I have these color bars. So what I'm going to do within, within this color group is I'm going to change two of the colors. I'm going to begin by selecting the red. I can go ahead and we can watch and we can see how these get updated. So now what I can do 
is I can change the, um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change the yellow. I just wanna change the yellow to 20 with the red one or the selected. So by doing that, it makes it more of a pink, pinkish color. Okay. And you'll notice that it's updating here. And then if I right click on the gray, I can go ahead and I can select shade. And now I can go ahead and I can make that a little bit darker by using the little color picker down here. And you'll notice that it's updating on the fly as I do that. And I click OK. And now everything has been updated. If I undo that, see how it changes back? And if I redo that, it updates everything. So now I've taken the, the, the colors within this color group and I've edited them, edited them in a very kind of um, orderly fashion. Um, and made revisions to it. And you, again, you can make as many changes to these as you want. So the other one that we want to do now to create color variations <clears throat> is we're going to work on the sunglasses. Go ahead and I'll zoom in a little bit. Oh, not that much. Okay, go. So again, if I select the sunglasses, and they are a group right now, I can come back and either I can select at the top here where it says recolor artwork, or I can select over here in the um, properties panel for recolor. And this is a little bit different. When we select from here, we want to assign new colors to this. Okay, so now instead of using this color group, if I so choose, we're going to select um, a different color group down here, if I remember correctly. Um, maybe not. Yeah, we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use this color group instead. So now notice already by selecting a different color group, how it's recolored all of these. And if I were to select um, this color group, use colors, and notice what it's doing. It's taking from the top to the bottom, the green, the pink, the red, the white. And it's in the same order, it's um, assigning the bright colors to them instead. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reassign some of those colors. I'm gonna go back down here and I'm gonna select our new color group down here. Now let's say for example, as it reassigns these colors that I decide, you know what, I really still, I still want the green frame, but I want the lenses to change color. If I click in here in the middle where the little arrow is, it will undo that change. So now what I've done is I've, you know, reverted back to the original. And then what I can also do is if I decide, you know what, I want to change, I'm going to, instead of using the green or the the light blue, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move um, this one up here. Notice how it's taken, it, both of these colors are taking on and are using the same color. And then if I wish to change the color of this, where these colors are assigned, I can double click on here and I can use a different color altogether. The one that they wanted us to use is we're going to click, um, I think we're going to change the magenta to 100%. And so we get that purple color. And then I'll go ahead and I'll click OK. And now look at I've changed the colors here. The, um, this color system while it's unusual to use it for an illustration because we kind of build our illustrations very intuitively. But if you happen to be a person who's um, a graphic designer who works in packaging, and there are a series of a line of packages for different flavors, let's say um, 
you've created a, a for colas with different flavors or maybe gum packages with different flavors. And they all have a similar graphic appearance, but what distinguishes one flavor from another are the color schemes. Then this would be a useful way of very systematically changing the colors that you want for your um, um, for each package. You know, sort of if you had a lemon flavor and a cherry flavor and a grape and that and so on, you could do that so that each one would work nicely. They used to have, I think, better examples rather than the sunglasses because this out in this context doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But when you use it in the context of packaging, um, where color schemes are uh, systematized and codified very carefully, then this would make a lot more sense. Okay. Um, let me cancel this. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to make sure that I'm just going to click OK. I didn't save that change. I guess I should have. But that's okay. So the next thing that we're going to work on is let me go ahead and open that file. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Um, I want here's the start file and here is the end file. There we go. So here is our start file. Let me zoom out. And the tool that we're going to be using for this is underneath the, um, let's see, it's underneath the, the shape builder tool. And it's called live, the live paint bucket. And it's really, in certain circumstances, it, it works very nicely. And again, for this, I don't know that it's necessary. Um, it was originally designed, it was my understanding that, um, that if anybody is familiar with graphic novels, that in the past, um, there were the illustrators who would illustrate in blue pencil. And then they had inkers and painters who would come back in and they would ink the outlines. And then they had another person come in and they would colorize the artwork. Well, this systemized, systematized that, that it could be done all by one person and done very quickly. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back here. Here's the end file. Okay. And then let's look at the start file. So what we're doing basically is we're changing this and we're changing the background here. So to do that, to turn all of this into uh, um, let me make sure that I have, I don't want the shape builder. I'm going to use the live bucket, live paint selection tool. Okay, is I'm going to turn all of this into live paint. Um, I don't want the text to be live paint, but I do want all of the shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of it. Okay, and I guess fortunately for us, they have locked the type down. So I don't remember looking at that. Let's see if that was, yeah, they did. They locked all that down so we don't accidentally select it. So to turn this into live paint, you select the shapes that you want to affect. And now what I'm gonna do, actually before I do that, I forgot. Um, what I'm gonna do is I need to add some guidelines here. So I'm gonna use this one here. Um, I'm going to click and drag across. And let me undo that and zoom in a little bit, get a little bit a better job here. So remember, um, in order to fill an area, it typically has to be a closed path, doesn't it? You've all discovered that from working on your maps. So if I click here and I just click a straight line across, and then I click here and I click a straight line across because these are going to be the division lines for our new colors. Okay. Now I can zoom out. <clears throat> I can deselect. 
and I can zoom out. And I'm going to select everything. So just click and drag to select the whole thing. Okay. Now what I can do is I can come up to object and where it says down here live paint, I'm going to say I'm going to make this a live paint area, a live paint. Okay. So this is all one group now. Now I'm ready to colorize this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here um, to our color panel. Or notice that we have a color group for us. <clears throat> And I'm going to select here, I'm going to select um, um, live paint bucket. Okay. Now, instead of using this color group, I want to use this color group. And as I highlight over each of these, you'll notice that um, what it does is that it, I can actually, it, it highlights in a, in, a, in a red, kind of a, a deep pink. And as I click over these, I can reassign the color. But then you'll also notice above the, the bucket itself, I want to let's select in here. There we go. We can, if I hit the right arrow key, um, I don't know if you can see how well you can see that. I can't make it any bigger, but it scrolls through the colors. So, for example, if I want it to be this color up here, I just simply click. Whoop, I didn't want that. What am I going to do? There we go. Make sure that that's highlighted. There we go. Now let's move over this one. And this one is the lighter pink. Uh, is it this one? Or is it this one? No, that was supposed to be here. Let's come down here. There we go. And we come back with this one again. And now without much muss or fuss, I have colorized this. And I can come down with this one. And I want to colorize this one with white. So I'll select white from here and I'll click. But you'll also notice that I still have those lines. So what I want to do is I'm going to select none from that area. And now moving directly over the line itself, notice how I can highlight it. Let me zoom in so that you can get a better peek at this. You have to be very careful. I want to go right over the line itself when I click. And it's removing the properties, the black properties of that line. So in very short order, I have um, removed all of that. I guess I need to remove the inside as well. So let me go back to this color here. And I'm going to move that over here. And I'm going to click in here. There. There. And there. And again, I need to select the none. So I need to go over each of the edges so that those are done. You know, whether this is a better system or not, I don't know. Um, as I said, in the past, if you had, if you had created a, um, a comic book, you know, a graphic novel, and you wanted to rapidly fill all of these shapes that you created with color, it could go very quickly, especially if you've already created your, um, um, your color panels um, or color groups, whatever you want to call it. The other thing that's kind of nice about it is that if I want, I can use the direct selection tool and I can select this right here. And as I move this up, notice that the color goes with it. I'm going to show you a little bit better idea because this is just the, the it is a white, um, but if I select the entire group, and I say that I want to go object arrange, send it back, bring the text forward. 
this might just be the back of the, the, the paper, you know, the, the white of the paper. But if I were to come in here, just this will be the final thing that I do for this lesson. I'm going to go ahead and select a brand new file. So for example, um, you know, on the MasterCard credit cards, um, if I were to select the ellipse tool, and this is where it can be a real advantage. I'm going to go ahead and um, make a circle. And let's go ahead and make it a black fill. I don't want a stroke. Let's go ahead and just make a nice red. Whoops. I didn't want that. Make sure that I flip it again. And uh, here we go. So I have a nice red. And then I'll go ahead and I'll make a quick copy of it, make sure that it's overlapped. And now I'm going to make this one orange. So let's go back in here. Let's make that orange. Okay. Well, what if you wanted to create um, a different color where the two shapes overlap? So to do that, if I highlighted both and I go to object and I select um, live paint make, okay. then I come back down here with the paint bucket tool. Now what I can do is I can go over here and let's say I want this actually, maybe I want this one to be yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and select yellow and I click here. And where the yellow and the red overlap becomes orange. Now, normally you can't do that because these are, we only have two separate shapes. But in fact, if I select the group selection tool and I select this one and I move that over, notice how it affects the overlap shape. And if I pull it apart, how it affects. This is where the strength of working with um, this tool is really kind of nice. So using live paint in certain circumstances, you know, if you decide a little bit later that you um, want to make some changes uh, and have it affect the fill, the overlap areas as well, it works really nicely. The downside of this though, or one of the downsides is that if I pull this apart and I pull it back together, I no longer have that. But if I go back to the group, um, paint bucket again, and I pick, let's go ahead and pick the orange. Then you have to reapply that once you pull them apart. Okay. So there you have it. A lot of different ways of editing color. A lot of different ways. Um, how are we doing on time? I think I'm gonna, uh, tomorrow, um, before we talk about type, um, there is one more way that I wanna show you that when you use the, um, the, the image trace feature, and then you use some of these color features, it's really kind of nice to create other color variations on a theme. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do now if there aren't any questions, is that we can um, go ahead and talk about some of the artwork from the from what you guys have done. So let's see who's here. Um, I'm going to move some things around here. Um, I'm just going to go in order from who's here. So I see Avalyn is here, Alexander Martin's here, Deborah Fuentes is here, Emily is here, James is here, Malik, Jose. So um, let's start with, with Avalyn and let's see hers. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and double click. And I'm gonna pull this down and hopefully everybody can see this. Um, Avalyn, um, let me go ahead and I'm going to allow everybody to talk. So, um, 
do you do you want to tell us a little bit about your artwork? Uh, sure. Um, Does it bother you guys that I'm recording this? Uh, not really. Okay, just want to let you know. Um, um I don't know. Uh, uh, first I saw like this tracing of like a butterfly mask, and I thought it was really cool, so I did that. Then I realized it was too. So I put something behind it. Then that was too plain. So I put, I made it more into like, I don't know, like a masquerade mixed with a clown, I guess. I okay. don't know. Then I thought I also was thinking of like, I don't know, like the French Rococo style. So I added like the collar and stuff. And yeah, that's, that's what it turned into. Okay. No, it's very nice. Probably the only thing that I would do in the hair is the, the little shapes that you have for the shadows. Um, mm -hmm. I would probably darken those a little bit so it stands out a little bit more. Um, otherwise, I don't know that I would change anything and except, yes, I would. Um, I would come down here for your gradients. That, For example, I don't know if you can see where my cursor is. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Um, let me highlight, hide this from it. There we go. Um, for example, in here, mm -hmm. I would make this part of the shadow a little bit darker so that the gradient goes from a real light to something a little bit, a medium to a medium dark. And then you're correct in the shadows of the collar itself being really dark. So just, it's, it's, it would be enhancing um, the values a little bit. I, it, that's my personal taste is the, um, if you want something subtle, that's one thing, but you have the mask itself, which is very high contrast. You have a, sh a drop shadow with tight, which is high contrast. And then from there you go to on the um, value range, very light. And it would, you know, have something, some middle tones to bring that in. That's all. That okay. makes sense, what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, normally I'd ask, well, I could have everybody if you want. Let me go ahead and um, everybody can chime in. I'm turning on everybody's microphone. So if, um, if you guys want to talk and have any contributions to Adeline's work, um, I'm sure she would appreciate it. Yes, no? Oh, um, Susie, yeah. Question? There you go, you should be allowed to talk. Hello? Yeah. So I just wanted to add that um, I like the shadow that she added as a backdrop. I think that gives it a nice, interesting little effect. And I really love the cutouts for the butterfly. It's very, um, I don't know, the negative space just really works very well. Uh, you, you mean the, the space in the back? Uh, space in the <clears throat> butterfly mask. OK, what about it, though, again? I'm just having a hard time hearing. I'm deaf in one ear, so even oh. with my microphone and stuff, I have a hard time hearing. Go ahead. I just really like the negative space. Oh, yes, it is. It's really very beautiful. It's really, yeah. really nice. It becomes the, ab the absolute focal point, which is what it should, because it is about the mask. Yeah. Okay. Nice job. Okay, cool. Okay. So, let me go on to the next one. So... Let me go back. <laughs> um, I've allowed all of you guys to okay. Go ahead and if you're not talking, go ahead and mute yourself so that we don't get any background noise. Um, so the next one up that I have here is Alexander Martins. Let's look at him. Oh, we've got a couple of them here. Alexander, which one do you want first? 
Uh, it's, it's they're kind of like the same thing. I just used a gradient on the one on the right, but I felt like I should submit both because they have their own personality. Okay. I like the puzzle idea um, concept. It, were you able to find an image of the puzzle to integrate it? I did. I, I image traced uh, a puzzle. Okay. Well, in the image tracing, it, it's a good example of uh, of where your well, what you have done is a good example of where image tracing can be very helpful. You know, so that you don't have to do all of it yourself. If you were really want finicky about it, you could come back and you could, um, you know, refine some of the shapes a little bit. Like if I, as I'm looking right here, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Right, right. Uh, you know, actually, a, little, a couple the of areas there that could be tweaked, and maybe down here a little bit, but, but no biggie. Probably what I would also do, just to dress it up a little bit, mm -hmm. Is that um, you don't have to do all of the above, but in some areas, maybe in the background, to add uh, contrast um, is to think in terms of patterns, gradients, that sort of thing to add texture. All right, okay. So maybe in the background, uh, if you were to add uh, a pattern, or if you were to add um, a gradient. Then that helps the you know it gives it the, some pop and you already did that in the other one so let's right. take a peek at the other one see what you did and how that's different yeah see this one by adding that gradient to the background and to the other areas it, it gives a little bit more snap I think so while they are fundamentally you know both the same masks just by um, you know just in this last lesson you know enhancing the color. But sometimes it can um, it can be effective in, in dressing up your, your piece a little bit. Cool. Very nice. Does anybody else have anything to say that you want to chime in? Let's go ahead and activate your microphone. I did want to add that for the moon. I thought it was cool um, to learn how to use the image tracing because for the moon, what I did was I had a picture of the moon that I had taken myself. And I was able to upload it and kind of pull out the colors and outline some parts of it. So the shapes on the inside of the moon, they weren't used with like a regular pen or shaper tool. They were just image traced from. Right. From that, if, 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 really if used properly, image trace can be a super effective tool. Um, really effective. Um, for a while when they had improved image trace um, and given it its own little panel and you had more control over it. And that was done several versions ago, but it's still in the scheme of how many years um, Illustrator has been around. It's a fairly late addition in terms of its refinement, but it was really kind of popular to combine both photographic elements and some image traced elements to um, an illustration. Um, and I thought it was really a very effective the way um, a number of illustrators were doing that. And yeah, it can work really, really nice. Um, and that's a good example. Yes. So no one wants to add anything? No? Okay. I'd like to add something. Okay, go for it. I didn't know about the moon. I'm assuming that's the um, the right eye. Right. Okay. I like it. I wish I like it was more obvious to me that it was the moon. I mean, now it makes sense because of the sun next to it. But to me, it didn't wasn't remotely. It wasn't like super clear right away. What you might do then, or try, Alexander, is to take the moon and bring it to the front. It might look kind of weird, but um, to overlap the, you know, the, the orange shape. Right. But I had, um, it, I had it like that at first, but it did feel weird after I recessed. It this did stuff. okay, okay. And then the positioning for this, the inside of it, where it gives it that shape, is actually on the bottom. 
because that's where it was naturally, but I just rotated it because then it was covered by the, the mask. Essentially. Right. But it's not like the moon the way it is if we were to look at it because it's rotated. Okay. And then a crescent just didn't didn't really mess with that. Got it. Okay. But um, interesting concepts that I'm seeing here, really nice. And I have to admit too, I mean, I'm not saying a whole lot about the execution, but so far the first couple have been executed very nicely too. So we've been fairly ambitious. So let me go back. Um, Let's see, Alexander, we did Adeline, Deborah Fuentes. So let's, um, let's look at Deborah. Oh, nice. Really, really complex background. So, um, yeah, you're going to interpret for, for Deborah? Yes, I am. Okay. So just have her tell us a little bit. Oh, so Deborah is saying she doesn't have the camera button. Um, oh, no. Um, oh, right. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me... I'm going to promote her to panelists. And then I'll go ahead and... She has to turn on her camera now. And... Now I will spotlight the video so you can see her. There you go. <clears throat> Let me make you bigger. <laughs> okay, I think I think that'll work. All right, go ahead. Explain your mask. Oh, so could you repeat the question, Professor? Oh, it's just it, off the top of her head, um, how she, I'm curious about the background, the patterns that she used. Um, I kind of like how she did, it, it literally is split half and half where you can see right down the middle and see part of the background of her, uh, of the mask. Um, I see that she's also in the lips, how she's ex experimented with a brush tool a little bit. And I hope that some of you guys use that a little bit more. Um, the simplicity of the mask and the face itself, I think, works nicely because it's complemented with a, a very complex and detailed background, so you get a nice balance. And the same with the colors. You have your really warm colors and earth tones in the mask. And that's complemented with the cool colors and the, the greens and that sort of thing in the background. So it, it's, while the whole thing is very complicated, it reads fairly well. And it could be, it, it, if she had done things a little bit differently, um, the mask could have been lost and everything else. And she did enough to make it the focal point and make it um, visible. Um, any thoughts about your approach and your ideas and how you approach your illustration? I mean, even little things, the way you handled the ears. I like how it's kind of like a G shape, which in the, if you were to, to build an ear in 3D modeling, that's kind of the shape that you use, but it has a, it, doubly has a nice, um, uh, very simple graphic feel to it that works really well. So, you know, the earlobes, stuff, it all works. And the simplification of the nose, they just have a nice graphic feel to them. Um, simplified um, and, and very elegant, that's all. Want to add anything? Well, 
Well, to be honest, I was trying to figure out how to use the program and how to build the mask. Um, mm -hmm. So some of my ideas worked, some of them didn't, but I thought, okay, um, for me, I've been trying to, oh, think of a place, yeah. I'm sorry. So one second. Let me let me switch the camera so that you're bigger for me because you're so tiny. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm trying to be a perfectionist, um, but I just decided that I wanted to see how the shapes worked together, and some of them are sharp. Some of them are flexible. I'm kind of mixing those things. Yep. Okay. Well, I think you've succeeded. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, the, I think what's happening with you is probably true for most um, everyone is that you're really, rather than focusing on the creative aspect of, of making your art, you're thinking a whole lot about how to actually use the program. And the more you use it and the more comfortable you feel with it, it will become over time second nature. And just as you don't think when you pick up a pen or a pencil or a paintbrush, you just pick it up and use it, the same will be true for Illustrator um, and other computer graphics programs. And that's, I'm speaking not only to you, Deborah, but to everybody. Um, it, it just takes time. And you will also discover, because this is a, a a very meth when you approach illustrations and illustrator it's it's a very methodical approach um, unlike something like Photoshop where it could be a little bit more intuitive which is closer to what you would do if you were painting or drawing using traditional media um, you'll you'll find that your that your thinking or your thought process your creative process kind of changes a bit to work a little bit more like the program so but that takes time to you have to put in your 10,000 hours I guess. Okie doke let's um how are we doing on time? We're gonna keep going here. Um, uh, oops. So we did Adeline, and how about Emily? Let's look at Emily's. Emily Kim. Hey, Emily, do you want to talk to us? Are you there? Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, right off the bat, um, <laughs> while you're trying to think of something to say, it, it has, um, Almost like a, a Dia de los Muertos kind of feel to it. Day uh, of the Dead mask. Um, Halloween kind of a, a approach. The only thing that I would probably do to dress it up is, and again, this is just the um, illustrator in me, not the program illustrator, but the commercial illustrator, is instead of leaving it a white background, Oh, you could I dress actually, it up a bit with a gradient or a pattern or a combination of those elements. Uh, I was actually trying to do it, but I was kind of struggling with it. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I, I tend to think in terms of complements. So you're working, most of your illustration is, are in the warms. So you have the yellows, oranges, and pinks, which are, you know, a red. Uh -huh. Think in terms of the opposites for the background. Think in terms of the blues and the greens and the violets. Okay. And then if, if they're the same values, that's going to make it difficult for your mask to read. So maybe it, they need to be lighter. Um, okay. You have to play with the values, the lightness and the darkness to see how that works. Okay. But I like how you know, you've added um, you know, the little stitches around the mouth, things like that. And it has um, 
the shapes of the eyes and the patterns that you have around the eyes and stuff in the, um, the web, the spider web and stuff, along with the black. Um, remind me of uh, Day of the Dead masks. Okay. It's kind of neat. So that would be my only suggestion. Thank Let's you. Let's start with the background. Okay, of course. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Um, let's see, we've got Emily, how about James? Let's go back here. Um, I haven't finished uh, mine yet. What's that? I haven't finished mine yet. Oh, okay. Um, uh, let's see, how about Malik? Is Malik, are you done with yours? There he is. Oh, there we go. Right. Do you want to talk to us, Malik? It's a nice um, night and day kind of approach. Yeah. You there? Uh, yes. Yeah. Pro go ahead. Do you have anything that you want to add or say? It's a, a, a nice approach. It's a very simple, um, elegant mask. And how you've taken similar kind of the sun moon approach. So day night um, works very well. I'm not sure if there's much for me to say. I just... um, okay, a couple of things that I would probably do then is that um, Okay, the, the nose on the moon side and the mouth, these strokes that you have, I would darken them. The, the red that you're using or the pink um, almost disappears. And you want that, I think, to be a little bit stronger. And likewise, on the right side, it's a light blue. I would darken it and make it a, 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 make, make it a darker blue almost the same color that you're using for the eye. Stand out, try that. Then the one other thing that you might try, the, the division down the middle is so, so abrupt. You might try a gradient between the two. That if this shape, for example, on the left overlaps the one on the right just a little bit and you have a really teeny tiny gradient to soften it. Or if you put a line down the middle that softened it, there's a, a tool that I can show you guys on another day that will allow you to diffuse it and soften it. So it would be those minor changes, but otherwise I like um, the simplicity and elegance of, of the shape. And, and everything. It's just it, probably the nose and the mouth, those are the probably most important things to change first. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Do. I did have a question about what we could do for different lines on different sides. Like let's say there was a single line that went across from the left to the right. Uh -huh. um, would we have to add a gradient to that line for it to match? Because I had a hard time with that. Um, I, I tried splitting mine in a similar fashion, but I just couldn't get the lines to um, have different colors without like adding a gradient. I don't know. I just I just had a little bit of a hard time with that. Let's um, let's some. We'll have time tomorrow. Give me. Let me um, let's let me try it tomorrow and see what okay. I can do. That works. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, it, it, that's what I probably enjoy most is problem solving. I'm not a huge fan of lectures, even though that's what I've been doing. Um, so if you guys um, have some things that you want to know, well, how would you do this? Then that makes it gives me something to think about, show you how to think um, and how to use the program. So let's try that tomorrow um, to change the line. Okay. Yeah, it gives me some food for thought. Okay. 
Um, Susie, did we already do yours or no? Uh, we haven't done mine yet. No, okay. So, um, where are you? There you are. No. It's A. Gonzalez. Yeah. Bottom. Bottom one. This one up. right here? Up. Oh, the there we go. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Oh, the tiger. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. I like uh, printmaking, so I wanted to do some kind of like lithography. Um, in the end, I ended up not doing the offset because it just looked like unfinished. It, it didn't. It didn't read like um like a print. So I went back, but I kept the dots because I like them. The half tone. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, well, for math, I know I need math one one three. Wait, say again. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my sister in the background. Oh, okay. Um, I, I like how you, when you were asking the other day about how do you create like a topographical map, how you repeated the outline of the shape. I haven't seen anybody do that and it's really, really nice. It's a nice um, effect. I yeah, might exaggerate it even more in the line itself, you, the color of the line. I might lighten it up a little bit. Okay. And, and not too much. You don't want it to overpower the mask, but it, it's really, really nice. That works really nicely. Okay. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, good use of line work. Um, nice. Uh, symmetry and shapes and a lot of detail and it, yeah it works very nicely so yeah otherwise um and, and again for everybody the quality of your your shapes there isn't much if any cleanup that i think is required for you guys because that's the technical part of the thing that i look at sometimes when i'm doing the grading you know how accurately did you create your shapes and they look very nice um, yeah, that would be about it. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anything you want to add, Susie? No? Um, not really, aside from the fact that I really wanted to make it look like a print, but okay. I'll experiment with that on my own and see if I can get it offset just right. Um, I think it has to do with, I got lazy with the shapes behind the line work. And that's probably the reason why it didn't read as well as I wanted it to. Okay. Well, typically, if you want things to be very readable, um, look at, look at, look at it, at it um, print it in black and white grayscale. Okay. And so oftentimes, uh, we get kind of over powered or uh, affected by the hue itself. Yeah. Like when you put uh, a red next to a, uh, a green, mm -hmm. and if you were to look at a red and a green just as a grayscale, they would be almost the same value. You yeah, know, the same kind of a middle tone gray. Yeah. And if you think in terms of light, medium, and dark, very simple, you know, but a broad range of values, that will help a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And for if you like silk screening and printing, I would think that would be very important. Okay, I'll take a look at that because I do struggle with color a lot. Yeah. So I, yeah, I would work in grayscale and then apply colors to it that are, have similar value. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we at? Um, we have Jose. Who's next? So I gotta find Jose. Um, there we go. Oh, oh, there you go. We're back to your robot. So we've seen your robot before, and it looks like you've worked out all the the um, and combined the shapes nicely. Is there anything that you want to share with everybody, Jose, um, in your process? Since um, you chose to work, you know, uh, 
and build half of it and then mirror it and then join parts together. You there, Jose? No? Let me um, jump. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hello? Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay, there. Uh, what was your question again? It was, um, is there anything that you would like, because we've looked at yours a couple of times now, as you were, you know, you've already shared it with us, so we have a pretty good idea of, uh, of what you were working on. But um, is there anything that you wanted, any aha moments or anything that you'd like to share with the class in terms of, because yours, in terms of how it's constructed, is a lot of shapes. And that can get quite overwhelming sometimes and confusing. Is there any way that you, did you break yours down into, into layers um, or how did you approach it? Um, how, well, what I did, I first grabbed the bottom plate of the mask, mm -hmm. um, grabbed it from a picture and then I used a pen tool. Um, and I just kept doing it. I did, at first I got overwhelmed cause it was too much. So then I, my mind started thinking, I said, well, just couldn't have and then copy and paste. <laughs> so I just reflected it. Uh -huh. Then I did the join to it, like when we, when I had asked you. Right. I joined some pieces where it would look nice. And then, uh, ah! sorry, that's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> um, then um, the only trouble I had with most was the eyes. I, I didn't, I tried to grab the eyes from the Transformer uh, Bumblebee. Mm -hmm. The yellow robot from Transformers. I tried to look at other eyes, but I couldn't find anything I would like. Um, I did have problems with that. So then what I ended up doing in another picture, I did one with uh, like half opacity and then I did another one where I covered it. So okay. that was the only thing with, with the eyes. But as far as shapes, I just kept adding more shapes. So it could look more like, like it's coming out more at you. Mm-hmm. And then well, they do some... stand, your, the eyes do work now. They do stand yeah. out. They yeah. really become, they're very intense. And amidst, yeah, I added a lot of shapes in there. There was a, a lot. <laughs> yeah, because it amidst yeah. all the other detail of your mask, and there's lots of shapes and things going on in there, it would be easy to, to not see the eyes. But um, um, Susie, yeah. I think this is sort of what I was talking about with regard to contrast. If you look at the, I think it's the sclera, the white of the eye, that helps to add contrast to this, to really, amidst all of this dark, to, to really help focus in, to see the eyes is a, is a key element in his illustration. Oh yeah, that works really well. Like, it's very readable. I see what you exactly. mean. Exactly, yeah. And a lot of that, again, I think has to do with not so much the color, but the you know, the values that okay. light, medium, dark works pretty well. So mm -hmm. that's just something that you might want to play with and tinker with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And yeah, as far as that, that was, that was it. I used like three pieces. Okay. Um, and, and mirroring it seemed to work okay for you. Was, yeah, I used the reflect tool. Um, I had some knowledge of how to use the Photoshop, well, Photoshop before, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I used to mess with it. So I guess that also helped. Okay. Kind of refresh me a little. Uh, I I liked how the pen tool works. It was very helpful. Okay. Um, I think I like the pen tool out of all, all the tools. <laughs> yeah. Well, for some people though, to switch from Photoshop to Illustrator, it gets confusing. Yeah. To go from raster to vector, it, it's just yeah. Oh, and then that was the other one, like trying to figure out the rasterize and then make the image more crisp. Mm -hmm. Um, but. I, there's parts where I did figure it out, and then there's parts where like I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. But <clears throat> once uh, it came out on the website, it looked better. So I I at the end I just walked away from it. <laughs> that's okay. it. I just that's it. I'm not gonna do nothing to it no more. Well, what these illustrations are are very complicated puzzles. If you like puzzles, then that's what that's what they are. Yeah, I was still gonna do more to it. I was gonna add like like a body, but then I said, no, just stop there, because yeah. by, the, by that time I was already No, no, on. no, just, this is fun, just a minute. Yeah. Um, 
got one more. Oh, I see. Okay, that was you. Okie dokie. Okay, thank you, Jose. Uh, yeah. So no we got one more. We got So Young. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right. Um, where are you here? So you. There we go, right here. You want to talk to, talk to us about yours? It's yeah. beautiful. It's really, really nice. Hello? 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 Yeah, I can hear you. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, my concept is ethnic. Uh, um, this is a Tracy Sharon Korean mask. I thought color harmony was important. <laughs> uh, so please understand it. Did you use the, the live the image trace feature? Uh, I'm sorry? The image trace, did you use that? To break it yeah. down? Okay, well, it's a good use of it. Uh, this is a good example of um, mm -hmm. how image trace can be effective and then recolorizing it to um, turn it into something totally different. Yeah. And I like the contrast with the background color. The really, uh, you've used very, you know, many of the same colors in your background, but um, the drop shadow helps too to lift it off the background a tad. That works nicely as well. So very nice. It works really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a simple mask, but um, what um, adds interest to it is the complexity of the shapes um, within the shape of the mask. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's it. Do you guys have time? It's or do you want Adeline, are you still there? Um, I think what I'm going to do is um, first thing tomorrow before the demonstration, I'm talking about typography, is um, <clears throat> I want to talk about the next assignment, which is the Toki, I call it the Tokidoki assignment because that's the brand name that Simone Legno gives his his artwork. He's an Italian designer, illustrator, who has moved to the United States and his style looks very much like a Japanese illustrator. Um, um, what I can also try to do this week, maybe um, thir on Thursday, is there's a lynda.com video that I can show with an interview of him. But tomorrow, um, first thing, I'll talk about the next assignment. That works for everybody. Okay, so I guess we're done for today. Oh wait, um, Vanessa, we didn't we didn't get to yours, did we? Um, hold on here. We have one more. My mistake. I'm so sorry. I didn't see it in there. So, Vanessa, Vanessa. Here we go. Are you there, Vanessa? Hi. Can you Hi. hear me? Really very what? nice. It's another, what you've done is a beautiful example of taking um, an elegant, simple kind of, it's not a domino mask, but similar to a domino mask and then embellishing it with 
beautiful use of color and uh, a fairly complex pattern in the background. Did you make that a pattern or did you just repeat the shapes and then duplicate them? Yeah, I made the initial three shapes and then um, I just aligned them and then made duplicates of each of them. Okay. Because in the future, you know, if you use something like that frequently, you could actually turn it into a pattern. Okay. Yeah, cool. but there, I, you wouldn't know that now. Is there anything else that you want to share? How you um, selected, for example, um, did you add the gradient separately to each of these shapes in here? Or did you select them all and then apply the gradient for them as a whole? In, initially, I was doing it individually. Mm -hmm. um, and then I realized that I could just select them all and the effect would kind of look the same. So exactly. I did mm -hmm. um, the select all on one side and then I did it on the other side. Excellent. So that's something, since we haven't really covered gradients yet, that, that's something that um, um, I want to be sure to cover when we get to it. Okay. Um, that's, it's really very nice when you do it that way. Then you can have it, it you know, it, it has a more uniform look. It doesn't, they don't look like they were done separately. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah. Any um, inspiration for you? Anything that, any aha moments, any um, struggles that you had? Um, I was, I really wasn't sure where to um, interpret the mask or like what to do with it, but I was just scrolling on Pinterest and then uh, found an image of a, of a butterfly that I really liked and mm -hmm. I used the image tracing tool. Okay. Well, again, it works very nicely. Usually the image trace, did you have to, to edit it much afterwards? Um, yeah, I, I kind of, I loosely used it. Okay. Um, but yeah. Because typically, um, with image tracing, it, the shapes are a little too jaggy because mm -hmm. it's following the pixels. Um, and they're not as elegantly designed as you would when you're working from scratch in Illustrator. And yours don't have, yours doesn't have that appearance. Um, the others don't have that appearance either. Yeah, I really I loosely used it just because I'm right. I'm not the best artist, so I just used it to guide me. Well, it has a very elegant, sophisticated look, so it works Thank very you. nicely. Yeah, and the color schemes work really nicely too. Um, the green background is a nice complement to the rest, and then you've added the oranges and the violets, and the yellows, which are part of the mask. Is a nice accents that tie everything together. So I don't know whether you did that intentionally or <laughs> yeah, or just I found intuitively, but it, it it all works very nicely. Yeah. Thank you. I I used a a I knew uh, the color scheme before I knew the image and the mask that I wanted to do. So um, yeah, that's that's where I took that. Okay. Um, for those of you who are still here, do the rest of you have any comments about um, this mask or any others that we've covered? We've kind of gone over, and I'm sure um, some of you have already had to leave, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but we will continue tomorrow, and we'll try to cover some things that I didn't get to talk about today. Okay. Are we done for today? I could keep going, but I know that some of you need to go. I just want to say the butterfly looks really nice. It's simple, but it's it looks really good. Yeah. The way it's set, set up. Yep. Thank you. Very, very nice. Yeah, very nice, Vanessa. Okie doke, so we're done for today. Um, tomorrow, we'll probably start with type, but before I start, start the lesson on typography, um, I do want to cover the next assignment.
which is the um, Kokidoki assignment, and then we cover a few other things too. Is to you know, help remind me of things that we talked about that maybe need to be introduced. Um, I mentioned image trace. I want to show you some of the things that you can do with that in combination with the color tools that we learned in this lesson. Okay. Well, everybody have a good afternoon, and I will um, see you all tomorrow. Uh, Professor, will you be yeah. posting the video from yesterday? It should be there. Um, I didn't see it. Try again. Okay. Take a look. Yeah, um, I had to stop in the middle of it because I used up my hour and there was a glitch. There's some. Oh, okay. Check again. It should be there. Um, yeah. Um, should be. Yeah, I see it. If you don't, then I will post it again or try to do something. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, mine only says updated five days ago, and then I don't. I only see lecture seven and lecture eight. Re refresh the screen.